Tasha. And I'm Christical. And we just did the January 2018 cover for Nail Pro Magazine! Woo! <laughs> and I'm Stephanie Lavery. I am so excited to have you both here. You traveled all the way from Canada to come do this cover for us, and I am so thrilled to have you. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having us, Nail Pro. I can definitely say we're both really excited to be here. And we've been looking forward to this for some time. It's something that has been on both of our bucket lists since we kind of entered the industry, and it's just hard to believe it's reality now. So thank you. So for this cover, we have done this before, but not regularly, where we have two people work on one set of hands. So this was kind of a fun treat because we get to see both of your skill sets. I presented you with just a color, and you kind of came up with the rest. How did you come up with the ideas? So I think for Christina and I... Um we're known as the Ugly Duckling Dynamic Duo. We are a pair, and we complement each other very well. And so when we decided what we were going to do for Nail Pro, I tend to be a little bit more on the artsy side, and Christina is the queen of French. So we knew right away that I wanted to do something artsy, and she wanted to stick with her traditional French. But put a little twist on both of them. Even though you say, Christical, that you like to do a simple French, what you created today was anything but simple. So today in my set that I did, I wanted to um, show my skill of my reverse French technique that I do using some of our new Ugly Duckling colors. So I decided to ombre both black and blue in the French line to give it some dimension and a little bit of a twist on it. And I also do enjoy doing some 3D work. So I incorporated some 3D flowers, roses, as well as lots of bling because I love my bling and just kind of tied it together and created the set of nails that I did. The nails you've done today, while they have the embellishment and the color, they're still very sleek and the structure is very sound. What kind of tips can you offer when creating a nail like this? I think for any tips, for someone wanting to create that French nail is it honestly takes a lot of practice. I have done many um, French nails, just even practicing on my hand trainer to get that perfect structure, that technique, and it does take a while to develop that eye to kind of know what you're actually looking for. All right, so tell us how you began with this set of nails. You applied forms and then? So after I applied my form, I took a full coverage pink and I started by applying out from the free edge, creating my base on my form, and then finishing the nail from the cuticle out, building the structure. I usually do that to give the nail time to set before I actually pinch the nail to get the nice C-curve and structure in. I like that you pinch. It's part of the reason why the nails look so trim. Um, do you pinch in the salon? Absolutely, and it's been a technique that I was trained on, and I think a lot of people now in the industry when they come to any trainings that Natasha and I put on, they have never even seen the pinching technique, which is a little bit surprising to me. So that is one huge part of our structure classes that we teach is the pinching technique because it does help with structure and strength to the nail, allowing you to have a thinner, natural-looking nail without jeopardizing the integrity. Now let's talk about those roses because they are very, very cool. Tell us how you created those. Well, we pre-did them. Basically, I just start with creating the center of my petal and I create little petals on forms or arabella forms. And I basically just start from the middle out and just keep adding until I feel the flower is full or finished. When you're creating the flower petals, is there a desired consistency that works best? I think it's very important when you are creating 4D flowers to really make sure the petals that you're applying are very thin. So tell us a little bit how you attach the beads and the crystals. So pretty much once I've completely finished my nail, I finished with a top coat. And then I'll go ahead and apply a little bit of the shticket. And I kind of visualize where I want my placement to go prior to putting on um, gel and apply my... 40 flowers. All right, Natasha, so tell us a little bit more about your highly embellished set of nails. Um, I think my style is the more the better. <laughs> um, I like to do techniques that are easy but effective. So I like things that I can put together quickly for my clients that don't take me very long but look like they've taken me quite a while. 
um, I decided to play off Christina's traditional French and make mine a little bit more artsy with the lines not being perfect and crystals and beads everywhere. So let's talk about your design. How did you begin? Um, so I began by creating my nail. I sculpted up my nail on forms with uh, acrylic. Um, I added a little bit of our fufu pink to the nail plate and extended it slightly. And then I created the rest of my structure with clear. Of course, getting that nice pinch in there to make those nails nice and long and slender. And then from there, I went to finish filing and I jumped right into my art. So for this nail, I decided that I wanted a little bit of texture on top along with the beads and crystals, of course. <laughs> so what I did was I actually applied some white gel polish and then took some um, clear glitter and sprinkled it on top while the gel was still wet and then cured it in the lamp. So it's a technique we call sugaring. So in the light, it does look like the nail has sugar on top of it. Um, then I went in with some crystals and some beads and I outlined my crazy zigzag French line. <laughs> and then I placed my big, beautiful blue flower on top that I made ahead of time. So when you're doing a sugaring technique, you're not top coating that because otherwise you lose the effect. That's right. Yeah. No top coat when you sugar. So I applied a thin layer of shticket. I applied my glitter and cured it. And then the nail's done. Is this something that can be worn on an everyday basis? Absolutely. I have clients who get sugar nails all the time. Not a full set. Usually on a ring finger, a finger that's kind of out of the way that doesn't get used a lot. Uh, it's just finding the right gel to hold that glitter in place and can hold up to everyday life, I guess. So talk about your zigzag design. Kind of a zigzag. I guess I wanted, like I said earlier, to play on Christina's traditional French because mine was a little bit more on the artsy side. I didn't want anything to be perfect in regards to the design. <laughs> um, the line, the French line, I guess you can call it, that I did was not perfect by any means. It was lower on one side, it was kind of jagged, and then I just really emphasized that with the application of my crystals and the beads. I think it's an interesting twist to be able to do that because, you know, it doesn't always have to be perfect. You can sort of play with the imperfection and it creates a whole new look. Absolutely. That's why I love art so much because you know what, a lot of the time, Sometimes you'll make a mistake and it works out for the better. And then what about techniques for applying crystals, placement? Do you have any tips to offer? So one of the main things that I suggest and I always teach in my classes too is about balance. So when you are creating a design, you want it to look balanced. You don't want it too heavy on one side and not on the other. You don't want um, too much color up here and not enough down here. Visually, you don't want the nail to look too heavy or too weighted on one side. You want it to be balanced and equal. That flower is pretty killer. Tell us how you created that. So pretty similar to Christina, uh, I pat out my petals and then what I did was I rolled them up like little cones. I got inspiration for, from some calla lilies online. I looked up dark flowers and there were these really beautiful dark, dark blue calla lilies. And I thought, well, how neat would that be to put a whole bunch of those shapes together in one big flower? So that flower took me about three hours to create. My favorite part about this entire set is that it's two different styles that complement each other and two different people did it and it still looks like one cohesive picture. How do you guys work together like this so seamlessly? So Natasha and I, we make such a great team and that's why working together as the master educators for Ugly Duckly Nails, we complement each other in a lot of ways. We complement each other in our work. Um, and we really support each other, too. She was cheering me on all day today. I was having some moments where I'm like, oh, my gosh. And she totally just calmed me down and worked me through it. But we really complement each other's strengths, for sure. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm focused more on art. And then Christina really takes the reins when it comes to beautiful, perfect French. And we both love a good structured nail. She's my rock when I need her. And I'm hers when she needs me. Okay. That's awesome. I love that. And I love this teamwork. What kind of stuff are you teaching in your classes? Primarily when we go and do little trade shows or any classes that we put on, I like to teach the pink and whites or any French designs and structure classes. And of course, I'm the art girl. <laughs> I really, um, for the past few years, I've been really inspired by Japanese nail art and Japanese gel designs. They really, really inspire me daily. So I like to 
kind of get ideas from here, there, everywhere and put those into my classes. And like I said, I want to teach people things that are easy to do, but look like they took you a lot of time. I think that what you two are offering to the nail community is really important because I think there's a need for basics for structure for a very clean set of nails but also for clients who are looking for something a little bit more fun and to your point something that can be done quickly but looks like it took forever. So Natasha and I we were so fortunate to be able to have great education in the start and our passion is education. It's very important to us that we are able to provide quality education to people who want to learn. So it is our mission in this industry to be able to provide that for people wanting to learn. So putting on classes, private training through Ugly Duckly Nails is one of our main focuses. And if people are interested in getting education from you, where can they go? You can contact us for any information on education through our contact email, which is contact.uglyducklynails at gmail.com. Thank you so much to both of you for coming out here. Honestly, it was such a pleasure to have you here, to have your work on the cover of this issue. I think our readers are going to absolutely love it. I love it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and thanks for helping us check this off our bucket list. Yes, thank you, Nail Pro Team, because honestly, this has been a huge dream of ours for so long, and it is a dream that has come true for us both. So thank you. Thanks, Nail Bro. Thank you.